we get a good example on our right of how that steel frame can support a building. The greenish glass building with the upside down V's or chevrons is from 2002, Erie on the Park by Lucian Lagrange. Uh, Lagrange came here as an 18 year old, worked at Skidmore, Owings and Merrill when they were working on the Hancock building, the building that has the big cross beams. And so by using the exposed chevrons on this building, it's his way of paying respect to the great engineer Fosler Kahn who designed not only the engineering at Hancock Center, but Willis Tower that we'll see a little bit later. When you have your steel structure on the outside, it basically means that between the elevator core and 25,000 people, and during that war it's a major supply center for the Union armies. By 1870, there are 300,000 people here. By 1880, 500,000. By 1900, 1.7 million people in Chicago all because of the location on the water and the fact that Chicago was a major transportation hub. Now, at this point, I hope you'll indulge me and let me tell you a personal story. I retired about five years ago, and she who must be obeyed told me she married me for better or for worse, but not for lunch. So a couple of days a week, I meet some friends for lunch, and last week, the friends didn't know each other. The first one says to the second, what did you do? retired. He said, well, I had a women's dress shop, but several years ago we had a bad fire, and I lost all my merchandise, and I lost my building. But thank God I had good insurance. How about you? Second one says, well, I lived in a city that had very bad flooding a few years ago. I had a hardware business. Miraculously, only 300 people died. Out of that tragedy came a couple of things. First, our major employment centers were not destroyed. The stockyards, lumber yards, factories were south and west of the fire zone. Uh, secondly, we discovered the properties of terracotta. The few buildings that survived when inspected, we determined were made with terracotta. But most important, young architects and engineers flocked to Chicago to rebuild the city. And having all of them, they had three requirements. One, of course, it had to be a monumental building, and that meant tall. If it was going to be tall, it had to withstand the Chicago wind. Secondly, the reason Sears was bringing all those people together in one place is they wanted very large floors. all the women's wear buyers could be uh, located. They wanted a floor for all the hardware people. And if you can believe it, they even wanted a whole floor for accountants and lawyers. But they wanted somebody else to pay for the building. They wanted to rent out the upper floors at very high rents. And that meant the floors had to be smaller up above. Well, it was a very simple solution. It was the nine pencils. The developer hired Cone, Pedersen, and Fox, the people who did the green building, and said, Build me a building. Well, how do you top the Willis Tower? Well, you don't. You just try to contrast to it. So if Willis Tower is dark metal and glass, that building is Texas pink granite in an octagonal shape with reflective blue windows. And instead of two large TV antennas on the roof, you have a lantern that has 1,800 fluorescent tubes. And at night when you come into Chicago, you see 311 South Wacker long before you see the Willis Tower. Let's look off to our right over the trees. You see a woman standing